What's up YouTube, Alex here with Mojave Repeater and today we're gonna to be discussing what's known as the radio team kit. As a radio operator, it's not enough to just understand how to operate uh, your radios and equipment. You also need to be equipped with the tools to be able to solve any problem that you might encounter in a field environment. So the radio team kit, the purpose of this kit is to provide you with the tools and the materials that you may need to solve any issue that you might encounter in the field. All right, so let's jump right into it. So first things first, uh, the bag that I've chosen for my team kit is from a company called Silent and they make a Faraday waterproof duffel bag. So the point of the Faraday bag is that it basically blocks any radio signals from entering or exiting the bag. So it's basically designed to be EMP proof if that's something that you are concerned about. Um, now, to start off, I'm not sponsored by Silent. I paid my own money for this bag, um, and I'm really impressed with the quality of the bag in general. So I'm gonna share with you a little bit about uh, the features and the design of this bag. So I choose a duffel bag because I want a lot of storage in a softer container that I can carry with me uh, or throw in a vehicle uh, that's going to have the amount of storage that I need to put all of my tools and equipment in. So this is a 40 liter duffel and it's more than enough space to store both all of the items in my radio kit as well as some extra gear uh, that I may have on me as well, such as you know, a helmet um, or magazines or something like that um, if I'm operating in a field environment. Um, I really like this silent duffel bag because it's a nice professional looking bag. Um, so I can take this with me on jobs where I might um, be interacting with customers. Um, and it looks clean, looks professional, uh, but it also has a nice place in a field environment. You know, if I'm wearing uh, multicam or something like that, it also uh, fits right in to that environment as well. Um, you know, this, this is a nice looking bag and it's better than something like this you know, which I used to bring to the field um, when I was in the Marine Corps, but uh, something like this, I can go through the airport with this, you know, wear professional attire, whether that be a suit or, um, you know, something more professional looking. And I'm not going to look like basically a boot going through the airport with my tan uh, duffel bag, which I've done so many times. And it's honestly kind of embarrassing. So just to start off with this, I do really like the look and the design of the bag. Um, now it has a ton of storage in it as well, so, and it is a waterproof bag, so if you unclip the sides here and then unclip this retaining strap at the top, it unrolls just like uh, you would expect with you know, a dry bag or something similar. And I can go ahead and open this up, it's Velcroed, um, and then it has plenty of storage for all of my tools. So just getting right into it, uh, some of the things that I like to carry are a Toughbook laptop. Um, you can use any kind of laptop uh, to keep with you for the field, but I prefer something like this uh, that is not going to give me any problems if it gets wet or dropped or something like that. Um, now I use the laptop, you know, when you're interacting with radios, I primarily use the laptop for programming. Um, but I think that, you know, as a radio operator, you need to understand networking as well. So I use the laptop for programming radios as well as doing any sort of network configuration that I might need with let's say a repeater or a customer's networking equipment, things of that effect. And this is just the charger for the laptop. Now one of the tools that I like to keep in the bag is a uh, just a nice multimeter. So this one is a Southwire multimeter that I actually got from a, a radio course that I went to. Um, and it gives you everything that you may need um, to troubleshoot radio equipment, right? So it's very important to know, um, one of the primary things that I use this for is for determining if cables are good. So you can simply uh, use the uh, resistance function on this meter uh, to determine if you have a short in a cable. So that's a very useful uh, thing that I may do. Now. A little bit more that you might want to be able to do with cables and antennas is test the visoire of your antenna. So what I have here, this is a Nano VNA on Amazon. And it's not you know, the, the most premium piece of equipment out there, but this is a great 
affordable tool to be able to test uh, the actual SWR of your antenna and to determine if it's efficient for transmitting and receiving on the frequencies that you intend to transmit on. Um, another great tool that I've used in the past as well is a bird sight hawk. It's much more expensive, but it's a much nicer tool as well. Um, and it gives you some access to some nicer functions than the Nano VNA does. Um, another great tool to have, and it, actually this is really uh, gets into the materials category, uh, but this is a connector kit. So basically you have um, a kit with in a nice you know, little leather case with a bunch of connectors in it. And this will allow you to you know, adapt different connections if you need to do some troubleshooting um, or just make a quick solution for something. Let's say you have a busted cable and the only other cable that you have has a different tip on it. Then you can use this adapter kit, this connector kit to be able to uh, create a quick solution for that problem. Highly recommend that you get one of those um, and you can always you know, restock it. I find that something like this uh, is largely consumable because a lot of the connectors either go missing while you're operating in the field uh, or just get used and left behind. So um, you can always restock this kit uh, with um, you know, extra parts from Amazon and stuff like that. So I recommend you have that on you. Um, now, speaking of networking earlier, um, I like to carry with me this little thing as well. This is a C to Summit, actually like a microfiber towel case, uh, but you can you know, use anything you want really to store this stuff. Um, what I do recommend is checking out Spiritus Systems. They make some nice multicam uh, mesh bags that would be good for storing stuff like this. Uh, but this is basically all my cables that I might need. So I have programming cables in here. I have some RJ45 Ethernet cables um, and any other networking items that I might need. Uh, so I might, you know, usually travel with a little, a small travel router. Uh, that's always good to have as well for troubleshooting if you need to put up an access point. Uh, but I would throw that in this bag and that, that travel router is very small. So it'll fit in here just, just fine. But it's good to have a little bag to keep your cables, network cables, radio programming cables, and things of that nature. Now I also have a little shrink tube kit. So it's good to have multiple sizes of shrink tube on you uh, because you know when I'm in the field, I'm going to be making cables. So you know if I'm gonna be making LMR 400 or RJ58 or RG58 rather, uh, I'm going to want to have multiple sizes so that I can use the appropriate size to make a really nice, professional, clean looking cable. Uh, so it's always good to have tons of extra heat shrink. You know, you might screw up and then you might want to have some extra on you. So I have tons of heat shrink in this little container. Now, this bag, you know, is big enough to store some radios if you need to travel with radios on you as well. So. You know, it's always good to have your radios and the bag has plenty of room to store those radios as well. So now getting into some of my kits here, I really like these Magpul DACA takeout cases. Um, these are pretty nicely sized to be able to store them, you know, in any sort of container. And you can fit, you know, quite a lot of equipment in here. So this one in particular, this is my toolkit with my um, like powered tools. So what I have is a mini heat shrink gun. This is really nice to be able to uh, you know, shrink my heat shrink tubing. So I like to travel with this. This is the adapter that uh, plugs into my powered tools and then plugs into a regular like drill battery. This is my powered soldering iron. So battery powered soldering iron. Uh, this is awesome. It's a lifesaver. It's nice to be able to just, you know, solder anywhere that I might be on site. Uh, so if I'm making cables, you know, these powered tools are very useful because I don't have to be tethered to a 120 volt outlet. All right. So here's the, uh, the drill battery for that. Just a charger, it's nice to travel with the charger as well. You never know when you might need it. And a tip kit for the soldering iron. Some extra, a spool of extra solder. It's always good to have. 
And then uh, just some, you know, the, to clean the tip of your soldering iron as well. Uh, steel, steel wool, basically, steel mesh. And then my other toolkit here. So this is just another Magpul Daka. And in here I keep crimpers. So these crimpers are for RG58, RG8, uh, those types of cables, smaller type cables. And then I have a crimper as well for LMR400. You might be able to find one that has uh, the right dies to crimp both the smaller types and the larger LMRs. Um, but I just have two. I also have a nice uh, cable cutting and stripping tool. A pair of scissors, might always need that. A small spool of RG58 cable. It's good for you know vehicle installs or if you need to make a temporary patch cable or something to that effect. Just put this down here. I have a small pair of uh, side cutters. Always want to have electrical tape. A lot of consumable items are good to keep on you, like the electrical tape. Um, a ruler to measure things. So if I need to measure like a run of cable, um, or if I need to, need to improvise an antenna, I can do that uh, because I know, you know, I have the calculations on hand uh, to be able to make the antenna. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Um, but just a simple screwdriver. An X-Acto knife, and the tip is probably in there somewhere, so I hope I don't cut my finger on that. Uh, a bunch of connectors, so I can make cables on the fly, and those are crimp-type connectors so that I can do them quickly. A headlamp, and I also have a flashlight in here as well. And really, the rest of this kit is just a bunch of consumable items. So I do have, you know, a couple markers in there as well. It's just good to have some markers on you. Uh, but the rest of it is really more consumables like cable tips um, and stuff to that effect. Now, the other thing that I keep on me, so this bag has a couple of pockets on the front and back. So in this pocket in the back here, I always keep a tactical communications handbook. Um, and I do sell these handbooks. I am now the exclusive distributor for these handbooks uh, for Thules that makes these handbooks. Um, but this is really nice to have because it has you know, lots of uh, really good practical uh, knowledge that you may need on the fly so you don't have to memorize all this stuff. Like for example, antenna construction, um, it's all in here and some basic uh, radio wave principles as well. Uh, so that's basically the contents of the kit. Now, another thing to just keep in mind, so sometimes I might be flying with this kit. And so, you know, if you're flying with sharp tools and batteries and stuff like that, um, first of all, you're gonna need to check the bag that has the sharp tools, but you need to carry on the batteries and stuff. So if I am flying uh, or traveling with the kit, sometimes I'll throw it in this case and so this is just a Pelican 1510 case. I find this to be the perfect size for all of these items. It fits everything exactly perfectly in this case. So it's basically got you know as much size as the duffel bag does, actually a little bit less, um, but it just fits everything just right. And what I have equipped on this case is a little light here. So if you can see that red glow, um, that is a light by a company. I'll link it down below to where you can get that light, but it's nice to have a little light to be able to see all your tools in the field. Um, and I chose red for that light so that it's low visibility. So if I'm ever doing anything, you know, with the military in a field environment, I will use the red light on the case. So, I got pretty much most of the materials here off of Amazon, um, most of the tools and stuff like that. So I'll throw some links down below in the description to some of the, um, some of the tools. Some of the stuff is a little bit more generic, so you can just kind of search it and find it. Um, what I want to you know, impress upon you is that there's really no right answer for this kit. 
it should be built out to suit your needs as you're operating in your environment. So as you get more time in the field, more practice, um, you know, operating radio equipment, then you're going to figure out what tools and materials you need to solve the most common problems that occur in the field. So speaking of which, what kind of problems might you know, a radio operator experience in a field environment, right? So without fail, you know, every time I went to the field, there would always be, number one, some kind of issue with a cable, right? So if I have the ability to cut that cable and splice it in the field or make a new cable, you know, whether it be an RF cable or some kind of data cable, if I can repair that in the field, then that's great without having to, you know, carry extras or even, you know, a lot of times we were just limited by the number of cables that we actually had. So to be able to make that repair in the field, that is, you know, really, really important. Um, you know, if you're primarily doing uh, vehicle-based ops where you have equipment installed in a vehicle, um, you know, you're going to have tons of cables and tons of, uh, you know, actual electric components, electronic components within that vehicle with cables running front to back and uh, antennas bolted onto the outside of the vehicle and things like that. So a lot of times things will shake loose or, um, you know, cables would become broken or dislodged, things like that. So you just need to be able to have the tools to repair that stuff in the field. I can't tell you how many times, you know, the bolts work their way out on an antenna mount and then the thing was flopping around or dangling uh, from the vehicle as we're driving. Just to be able to have the tools at your disposal quickly, quickly accessible to be able to fix that thing is huge. Um, and then any sort of troubleshooting with electronic equipment, so whether it may be some kind of radio um, or computer or something like that, to have that multimeter is a really good tool to be able to diagnose and assess the equipment um, you know, that you're operating with, whether it be a battery that has failed or something to that effect. At least you can figure out the answer to that and then know, you know how you can be prepared for next time or hopefully you're prepared uh, when you go into it to begin with. Okay, so what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm just gonna put this bag on the floor and I'm gonna show you the interior of the bag uh, with some of my uh, gear in it as well to show you how much storage that this bag really has. All right, so just quickly taking a look at this bag. So you have a handle here and then a buckle and that's going to un unclip uh, pretty easily and quickly. You have two buckles on the sides and then you can unroll the bag uh, to the top. This is secured by Velcro. Now uh, in here, what I didn't show you in the video is that there's plenty of space to keep um, you know, some of my extra equipment like let's say PPE, like a helmet, um, hearing, uh, hearing protection, stuff like that. So just have my hearing pr uh, protection, my helmet in case I'm you know, in the field on base in the training area or something like that, need to have the helmet on hand. Um, you could see how much space is actually in this bag. So it's a 40 liter bag um, and it has a nice material inside. It's very durable, like this outside material you can tell is water resistant, waterproof and very durable. Um, so I have no problem, you know, storing electronics and stuff like that in this bag because I know, you know, if I'm in the field in the mud or the rain, it's not going to get uh, impacted by that. But just in this bag, you can kind of see how I have it laid out with all the stuff in here and everything fits really nicely in this bag. So plenty of space for all my radios and equipment in there. All right, guys, so that's pretty much all I have for you. Um, I'm sure that, you know, there's some things that somebody may have an opinion about that I might be missing from this bag. Um, and that's okay. Like I said before, there's really no right answer for this. But these are the tools and the materials that I have found are most uh, important, most necessary for me when I'm operating um, in any sort of environment. Uh, with radios and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, what I'll leave you with, what you should take away from this video is to just ensure that you're prepared 
for any scenario with the tools and the equipment that you might need to solve any problem in the field. Okay, just as I said in the beginning, um, that's what you should be taking away from this video. So get out there, you know, get training, number one, on your equipment. Um, you know, Mojave Repeater, we offer training courses all around the country uh, for RTO basics and urban communications, and we have some more curriculums coming out later this year as well. So go out there, get some training on the equipment, learn how to be more of an asset for yourself and your team if you're operating with radios. That's pretty much all I have for you. Thank you for watching this video. Please hit the like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below. I'll see you in the next one.